Hey everyone, we're back to our little house from last week and this time we'll do all the decorations. I'll start with making the yard, then the little decoration details, and then we'll see how it all comes together. First thing first, we need a yard to decorate. I used an MDF base for stability and add a layer of grey board on top. Aside from the obvious strengthening of the base, this lets me create a sort of nest for the house that will keep it steady. I mark the contour of the house on the grey board and use my craft knife to cut it out. This step is not really necessary if you're going to glue the house down to the base, but I want to put LED tea lights inside the house and to be able to reach them after, so I need to be able to actually lift the house and having this raised layer helps keeping it in place. I painted the two layers of the base brown and then added some texture. I'm using Tim Holtz's grit paste here, um, I just mixed it with some brown acrylic paint. This is the translucent grit paste, but the white one will work just as well. Doing this before adhering the two base layers makes it easier to keep the inside edges clean. This is just the base layer of the texture. I'll be adding more of it later with the decorations to make them look like they were planted into the ground. And while this dries, we can start working on the decorations. Obviously, I had to have some pumpkins. I had these little ones from Tim Holtz's Ideology line. Um, they come in three different sizes and these ones are the smallest. I used brown paint to dirty them up and painted the faces with black. Then used some wire to add curling vines. For the tombstones I used dyes. I cut each one twice and glued them together for a thicker base. Then I added some texture. These are the Halloween limited edition uh, texture paste by Tim Holtz and they are so awesome. I really really love how they look, especially when they're combined. I think they really brings out the best of both. After they dried completely, I dry brushed them with a little bit of black and finally added some details with a fine liner. The tree is an especially important part because it gives so much personality to the whole piece. I used some flower arranging wire to create the base, but any armature wire would do. I bunched a few wires and twisted them together for the trunk, and then I twisted the reminding edges separately or in pairs to create the branches. To create the texture, I wrapped the wire base with tissue paper and glue. I used black tissue paper because it saves me a layer in painting by providing a dark base that I can simply dry brush over. The tree was actually a little tricky because I wanted it to have a very strong silhouette, but I didn't want to go full on creepy with it. Um, you know, this house isn't haunted, it's supposed to look like a nice little house of Halloween fans. What solved it for me was adding these tiny branches with a wire and clumps of leaves that makes it look like an autumn tree rather than a dead one.
I cut the leaves from baking paper made from recycling materials. Um, it has this perfect brown shade and I really like this light transparency that it has. In the end, I did mix in a few leaves that were punched from actual dry leaves. It can be a little tricky to work with leaves because they're pretty frail, but the results look really, really good. I had the idea of having zombie hands climbing from the tombs, but none of my dyes were small enough and it took me a while to get that facepalm moment of shrink plastic, of course! Shrinking something this small can be tricky, but using a heat tool or an embossing gun makes it a little bit easier because you have more control, you can work a little bit more selectively and very quickly bend or adjust things while the plastic is still hot. Once the idea of using shrink plastic was there, I used it for several other decorations like ghosts and a standing skeleton that you'll see a bit later. After making all the decorations, it was time to assemble. There isn't too much to explain here, so I'll just put on some music and speed through the process. But before I go, if you're enjoying this video, please click the like so I'll know to make more and to help it to get out there to more people who could enjoy it too.
I'm really happy with how this came out. I think it really conveys the idea of a house with seasonal decorations and has all the Halloween vibes without being creepy. So obviously my next project will have to have all the creepy. Enter evil laugh here. <laughs> I have a plan for October to make a mini haunted house and to make it live. I'm still not completely sure how I'll do it, I'm working out the details, but I'm really excited about it and I hope you are too. Stay tuned and I'll see you next week. Bye for now!